Okay, so 9-2, we are doing reflections. I think this is my favorite transformation. Eh, maybe a glide reflection. This one's right up there um, when it comes to transformations. So a reflection, um, one thing you need to note about a reflection. So think about, right, when you look in the mirror or sometimes, what am I thinking? There's an app that I use that when I use it everything's flipped everything's backwards marco polo have any of you heard of marco polo it's kind of my new favorite thing yeah. Yeah. i love it um it's the way i get to like see my friends from out of state without having to actually facetime because we don't ever have time at the same time so anyway side note about marco polo back to reflections um we have with reflections what's called an opposite orientation every single time so I'm going to tell you what an opposite orientation is. <laughs> um, but this is a good way to judge whether something is a reflection or not. If you have an opposite orientation, oftentimes you're looking at a reflection. Um, so basically what happens with an opposite orientation is if you have something like this, for instance... Okay, if this is H O G and this is H prime O prime G prime. Okay. Yesterday when we were doing slides, if you named the, the things, they got named in the same direction. Like I was going clockwise every time I named it, or I'd be going counterclockwise every time I named the two figures. With an opposite orientation, you're moving in the opposite direction. So if I name this triangle H-O-G, I'm moving around like this, right? Triangle H-O-G. I named it in a clockwise motion. Oops, clockwise. Okay, whereas if I were going to say triangle H-O-G maps onto triangle H prime O prime G prime. When I name that one, now I'm going counterclockwise to name it in that order. So if it goes from clockwise on the one to counterclockwise on the other or vice versa, um, then I know I have an opposite orientation. If I can name them both in the same direction, it's the same orientation. Okay, so a reflection, what we're gonna talk about today, will always have an opposite orientation every single time. That's how you can tell it's a reflection, is you name it clockwise for the one and counterclockwise for the other, okay? Um, another thing to note about a reflection is there's always a line of reflection. There's always some line that you flipped your, your picture over. Um, so like on this one that I just drew, my line of reflection would be not right there somewhere around there. Oops, I just took away my clockwise. Come on, there we go. Um, but it would be somewhere, I still didn't get it in the middle, but somewhere right in the middle, right? Where if I folded along that line, my two figures would land perfectly on top of each other, okay? Um, so let me give you another line of reflection set up here just so you can see what I'm talking about a little better. Let's say I have these two figures. Okay, with a line of reflection, so if this is my line of reflection, then the distance to that line should be the same for every set of points. So if I'm going from here and here, these two points, this distance and this distance have to be the same. Okay, if I do it up here, from here to here, that distance has to be the same. Same thing for here, the distance from that point and the distance from that point to my line of re reflection will always be the same if it is truly a reflection, okay? So your distance away should be the same. Um, what do you suppose happens if your line of reflection, so let's say this is my line of reflection. I should really use a straight edge, hold on. This is messy. I just moved my ruler. 
All right, say so that's my line of reflection. What if my figure is this triangle? So let's say this is triangle A, B, C. Um, when I reflect over that black dotted line, over my line of reflection, my distance away has to be the same. So where is B prime? On the line, right? It is point B. So B and B prime will be the same point. So this will be B prime also. Um, and then the rest of them, remember we talked about the distance from a point to a line? Do you remember what it has to be every time? Um, in the distance, yes. In what we're going to do today, the distance will be the same for a reflection. But back in chapter 5, I think it was, we talked about how they determine the distance from this point here to a line. Because I could go from that point, I could go, oh, the distance to the line is here or the distance to the line is here, or the distance to the line is here. Do you remember what it has to be? Anybody? It has, has to be, be perpendicular, perpendicular right? Um, so if it's gonna be perpendicular to the line, then if I'm gonna reflect this over, right, this distance here has to be the same as this distance here. And then that would be, that was your grade going down? That's a terrible thing when you have a sound every time your grade goes down. That's bad. Um, um, but anyway, so you need to go perpendicular, right? Perpendicular this way, same distance here. And this would be our new triangle then. So these distances are the same, okay? Okay. Um, don't worry if that's not perfectly clear to you. I'm going to make it clear as we go. Any questions on that so far? No. Okay. So here's what you're going to do with this. Um, if you have leftover graph paper from yesterday, great. You can use that if you're taking notes. Um, if you would like to grab another piece of graph paper, you are welcome to do that. All right, here's what it says. What? Oh. So messy. Okay, um, so if this is your setup, okay, it says point F has coordinates. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Um, point F has coordinates of 2, 6. What are the coordinates of, now look at this, okay? Yesterday we talked about translations. Today we're talking about reflections. So a reflection is a capital R, which can be a little tricky because we're going to talk about rotations the next time, that's Monday, which you're gonna bring a protractor for, right? Um, so bring your protractor Monday. But a rotation is a lowercase r, okay? So just make sure for reflections, you're doing a capital R today. Um, and then this is telling you what it's reflecting over. This y equals three, and this is what I just talked to you about when we were going over the homework. Y equals three is what kind of line? Horizontal, okay? So we know this is a horizontal line um, at three, okay? So you're gonna get, or you should. Um, what? Reflection. Okay, so if you have a graph and they've told us that Point F is at 2, 6. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, here's point F. I want to know what are the coordinates if we reflect over Y equals 3. Okay, that's what this is saying. A reflection over the line Y equals 3 of point F. 
So we need a horizontal line where y is three. Um, here's where you need to be really careful because I so often get people going, oh, here's three, and then they tell me it's a horizontal line, so they go here. What is y right there? Y is zero there, okay? You want y to be three, so please don't do that. You wanna go to three and draw that horizontal line in. Okay, so that is our line of reflection. And now the, the job that you have is to figure out where would that F end up if I reflected over that line. Remember, you need to go perpendicular. So if I go perpendicular to this red line, that is one, two, three units. This would be perpendicular right here, okay? So if it's three units down, I need to go how far below that line? Three units, right? You want to be equidistant. So one, two, three would put you right here. What do we call that point? We call that F, F prime. prime, right? That is the image of F, okay? So when they ask you what are the coordinates of this new point, we would say F prime is at two, zero, okay? Questions on that? Hey, what are you gentlemen working on over there? Math notes? Oh, okay. He's giggling. It looked like he was giggling at your screen. Um, okay, what if, what if I have this point and I said a reflection over the y-axis of point P. Hey, can you not right now? Um, a reflection over the y-axis. Which one's the y-axis? This one. This one, right? So if we're going to flip over the y-axis, that is one, two, three, four units to get to the y-axis. So you're going to go one, two, three, four more. And that would be your P prime. Okay? What? Okay. Good on that? Great. Um, some things to notice. A reflection preserves distance and preserves angle measure, meaning it is a rigid motion. Okay? When you do a reflection, it should not change size on you. The, the one that will change size comes later. Um, but most of these will not change size on you. Um, what you're going to do for this next one, you know what? We're going to pick new points. That's going to flip over. Um, on a piece of graph paper, we're going to come up with, oh, I have a low battery. Let's plot this triangle, okay? So you have negative two, three is your A. Um, one, four is your B. And zero, one is your C. Okay? If I tell you that we're going to do a reflection over the x-axis of triangle ABC. Okay? I want you to think about how different that's going to look than a reflection, we'll do this one in blue, a reflection over the y-axis of triangle ABC. Can you tell me anything looking at the ideas behind this can you tell me what, which of those seems like it would be simpler right now? Jillian. X axis. Why? Because then you just flip it over that line that's already there and you don't have to like. Right. So if we flip over the Y axis, there's a whole, a whole lot of overlap, right? Um, over the X axis, there is no overlap. So let's just do X axis first and then we'll do the Y axis. So if I'm at point C, and here is my x-axis. Where is c prime? Negative one. Negative one, right? Right now it's positive one. We're going to go down one. 
So this would be C prime, okay? Um, A is three above the line, one, two, three. So we need to go one, two, three below the line. So this would be A prime. And then B is one, two, three, four above. So one, two, three, four below would be B prime. So if I told you to reflect over the x-axis, you would get that red picture. Okay, now let's look at the y-axis. If you had to reflect over the y-axis, where is C prime? In the same spot, right? If you are on the line of reflection, then it doesn't move. So that's C prime, okay? Where would A prime be? What point? Be on two, three. Two, three, right? This one right now is two to the left of my line. So you're gonna go two to the right and put a point there. So this is A prime, okay? And here's where I feel like a lot of people get confused on these. Now B, started on the right of the line, right? A started on the left of the line, so we moved it to the right side. A or B is starting on the right side, but for some, re some reason, I cannot speak today, you guys. For some reason, people want to flip it so that it goes closer to the A prime. That is not the case. It does not have to get closer to the A prime. Um, it has to flip over the line of reflection which is this line right here. So if we're at B, B prime is actually gonna go to the left, right? We were one to the right, you need to go one to the left. So this would be your B prime, and then you have this triangle. It's a little messy with all the overlap, okay? So just be aware of that. If you're flipping over a line and your figure is on both sides of that line, your new figure should also be on both sides of the line. Okay, questions on that? Okay. Um, we're almost there. Example three here. That was example two. I don't know if I put a two by that, sorry. Okay, this is straight out of the book because they do a much better job of drawing the picture for me. Um, but if you look at this picture here, okay, do you see a reflection image for triangle two? No. The one that has a two on it. Number four, right. Um, does this help? Okay, so triangle two, this guy here, right? If we're going to flip over a line, if we're flipping over this line, the triangle would end up being somewhere like that, which is not there, okay? But if we're flipping over this line, perpendicular and perpendicular, those are the same. Um, perpendicular here, perpendicular there. Those are the same. So you end up with that same triangle flipping over line K. Okay. Um, is there a reflection for triangle three? Yes. Yes. Triangle one would be your reflection. Okay. So the way that you'll write that, um, yeah, we'll do it like this. Um, we would say, um, for angle two, a reflection over line K for triangle two would be triangle four, okay? Does that make sense? So you're just telling me which line it's reflecting over and what is reflecting and becoming what other figure. So a reflection over line K of triangle two is triangle four. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we're going to leave it at that. Any 